Okay, we are recording. Uh, welcome to this merge testing call. Um, I guess two goals that at least I have for this hour. First of all, I'll get on the same page with regards to what we actually need to do to test the merge. Um, and ideally, second, roughly try to see if we can assign some groups or some folks like to kind of own some, some of these tasks. Um, yeah, because I think in the coming months and two, uh, this is kind of going to become the main thing uh, we, we end up spending time on. So uh, yeah, we want to make sure it happens. Um, Mikael has put together a great doc outlining, I guess, his view of everything that needs to be done. So that's probably a good place to start. Um, maybe it makes sense to start with like your doc, Mikael, but uh, kind of go a bit high level, right? Like not necessarily into every specific test, but just make sure that we kind of all agree about like the categories of tests that we need, if that makes sense. And, and to see if there's anything that's like missing. Um, I know there were also some stuff we had on the readiness checklist and uh, I'm not, I haven't like cross checked to see if like everything that's in your doc is, is there and vice versa. Um, but yeah, maybe we, you can start by just kind of walking us through like the, the buckets of like different testing that you imagine we'll need. Yeah, sure. So I can share my screen if yep. it helps. Yeah. Okay, regarding the, yeah, do you see it? Can you see it? I see. Yeah, cool. Um, yep. Regarding the merge readiness checklist, yes, this document is probably not like they are not uh, very well um, linked to each other. So we need to update probably the merge readiness checklist with what we end up with. Okay, so yeah, regarding this test plan, um, this this is a draft, first of all. Yeah, there is the spec documents. So this is like one of the most important sections here. So what, we, what do we actually uh, wanna test? um so yeah yeah main categories like unit tests we have the unit test and consensus specs so i've just listed methods here that must be covered with tests then we have this e two eips uh, and we have block tests and we have retest the retest e tool that is used to test client implementations execution layer client implementations that they satisfy uh the requirements of this and that eip i think this yeah this kind of test could be implemented with this tool um regression testing here i guess that um we have those block tests for previous hard forks and we just want to be sure and i think this is this pretty standard procedure to to run all, all tests before the fork block. And then in our case, it will be before transition block, just to, uh, to, to be sure that the proof of work part of the client works as expected and hasn't been affected by the changes introduced in the CAP. We have fuzzers. Fuzzers, I, I think it's like a separate topic. Um, not sure if we want to cover it today. Then, this is more or less certain things, at least for me. Probably I'm missing something here. So feel free to add. Um, yeah, feel free to interrupt me at any point and add something. So these two standalone testing is pretty much understood. Now we're, um, the things uh, becomes complicated when we go to the integration testing. When we need to test CL and EL um, in different combinations. And yeah, I think that Hive, it, this is my assumption, that Hive will cover all or almost all of the, these things. And this probably is, is very strong assumption. I don't know, because I don't have like rich experience with Hive. So we can test here, Engine API, um, EIP implementations via Engine API interface. So literally just take an EL and run some, and try to do some transition process testing just using the engine API implement interface. 
it should be doable and i think it's easier than like uh the next step where we're testing the cl and el um fully featured clients and different combinations of these clients um so like yeah like here so it's like just taking two two, two clients and uh, probably several instances of uh, two client implementations and just playing around with uh, them in in hive and right in those test scenarios yeah there is like a, a huge list of test scenarios and this is not like you know it's not the end list um each test case should be um yeah the work on writing the test cases in the, the detailed test cases should be done yet that's all we have system tests which are test nets and i don't think they should be covered in this document I'd rather prefer them to see in other documents. So that's, yeah, and some useful resources are also listed here. This is all that came up to my mind with respect to testing. Um, and uh, other and links like test factories for uh, 4399 for engine API uh, made by Marius and Merge Mock and so forth are also here. So this is what was around recently that's basically it so um any questions so far any suggestions i am hey guys i'm galen uh, i'm curious if there's anyone on the call with like expertise in hive who can like validate that assumption or like talk about how ready it is to handle these these cases you mentioned Maybe there's not. Yeah, that'd be very good uh, to be justified and to understand what do we need uh, to extend the hive with, or is it even possible to implement all this kind of stuff? Mm, I'm not like I'm not a huge expert on hive, but uh, I think all of this can be done. Uh, we have uh, right now. We have like. Uh, uh, Hive runs uh, static test cases. They run like we run the general state tests, and we also run uh, sync tests so that like we have uh, two different clients syncing from each other, and uh, also like GraphQL tests and stuff like this. So uh, Hive should be able to uh, handle all of this pretty easily. But yes, it has to be implemented and then. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Um, I as think I, I saw understand. there was a PR to add. Sorry, I was just going to say, I think there was a PR to add ETH to client simulators to Hive that was merged a couple weeks ago. Mm, yes. Yeah, the, but we'll still need like this, full simulator. Yeah, that. This PR, I think okay. that there still needs to be implementation of like simulators that connect the EL and CL clients. Yes. I think that just spins up the Genesis. And... I think we need like simulator that connects to CL, a simulator that is a CL mock and is an EL mock if we want. So, did you write these? Did you use any of the notes from the interop? To write this, yeah. Or is this, okay, yeah. So now we talk yeah, yeah, about this. Yeah, it's based on, partially based on those notes. Okay. I might have missed something while moving those notes from 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 pictures to to the text. Double check them. <laughs> So you, you think that we can take, yeah, I was also thinking about like looking at this PR. Um, also the question, can we use merge mock anyhow to write simulator? So I think merge mock will be, so like or right can now- Or can merge mock be a simulator basically? I think it can 
be part of a simulator. So like right now, if you want to run the consensus test against the client, there's like a simulator that runs and it reads the test from this Ethereum test repo and converts them into like a Genesis file and then takes the block ROPs and directly gives them to the clients. And then at the end, it checks to see if the head block is correct. And so after the merge, you won't be able to just simply import block ROPs. You also need to take engine API directives. So I see merge block as something that would sort of help replace that situation. Who has an experience in writing simulators for Hive? I, I wrote the transaction simulator, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I can like, I can take a stab at it. And, and and see but if someone else wants to uh, uh, wants to write a simulator um, that would be so, great yeah easy. so I guess I can add more on to this um for prism we have this end-to-end -end test case and it does it basically what it basically it's basically what hype is doing from for consensus layer clients it launches the deposit contract and then it starts beta nodes with a bunch of validators. It starts multiple beta nodes with validators and it does do all these like, state transitions, e e epoch transitions, and then it simulates slashing conditions, adds it, blah, blah, blah. But um, right now it only supports Prism. So we would like to definitely support more clients' implementations. We've been talking about that. And I think that's essentially what Hive wants to achieve it sounds like. So yeah, I'll be happy to like point you guys um, to this repo and uh, maybe we can get it to be compatible and even and even pour some of the work into Hive. I think that'll be great because our end goal is definitely do more multi-client end-to-end testing. And now with this multi-execution layer client, we have to hook up. It sounds like a good time to to basically combine the effort together. Yeah, it seems so, like a good time. So Mario has also uh, wrote a bit uh, about that, uh, wrote a program to execute static test cases uh, uh, against uh, the execution layer. And this may be also, um, yes, this one, yeah. Yeah, um, basically that's not as full fledged as Hive. It's just very, very simple. It's just like um, it sends um, engine directives uh, one after the other and just uh, verify the the response from the from the client. But yeah, I'm I'm sure that Hive is much more powerful and capable. I think maybe if we can, if I could somehow port uh, the test case, the test cases that I have there into Hive, into something that Hive can process, that will be, I, I think, even better. I guess hmm. I think the way I've been seeing is that we would take a lot of the code that Merge Mock is and just create kind of a simulator out of it. And then that could read test fixtures like you've written. But something separate to Hive or what, what do you mean? Sorry. Um, I was I was on, I was thinking that the the merge mock tool we would just take a lot of the code from that and add some code to read the static fixtures like you've written and just create a simulator out of it rather than having it being like a separate repository, just have it kind of become a a simulator. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's that's the best way to do it. Have uh, uh, have the static test cases and then feed them to the simulator. I, I guess I, the only kind of weird thing is is that merge mock is currently sending blocks over dev p to p before the merge happens. So it's like very much a real world test scenario. I don't know if that's what we want that simulator to be. Um, before the merge, so before it will need to. Yeah, I see. Right, because it's pro like it it 
if you're running an execution layer client, it is almost as if it's really going through the merge because it is receiving the things through the same types of code paths that it would in the real thing. So uh, there is a simulator that uses def but if we currently, right? So it just sends. Basically, this should be. Yeah. Yeah. So. But it seems like the simulators are pretty focused. So there's like some that focus specifically on some dev P2P tests. And then there's like the consensus tests. And those are done via like the import subcommand of clients. And my understanding is that is just like focusing specifically on we're testing the correctness of the consensus uh, implementation rather than also having to potentially deal with networking things. So the, the transaction tests, for example, are also uh, run via dev P2P and the idea is to create like large okay. transactions or large blocks or something that, that should also like be dropped and stuff. But yeah, I think Got it. Uh, it makes sense to, 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 to do it uh, via the code paths that will actually be used. Okay. So it, it means, uh, yeah, if we do it with the, the code passes that actually are used, means that before them, like pre merge, um, all blocks and wire the fit of feed. Then we, sw we switch, for example, to Engine API to initiate the transition and to finalize it. This is what you mean? I don't know if that was to me, but I think that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So do we need two simulators for this goal or do we need one simulator that can done both? I think we need we need multiple anyway. We need yep. um, we need one for like static test cases and uh, for uh, uh, sync um, synchronizing different clients from each other should should also be a, a separate simulator. Uh, under uh, under static uh, use cases, you you mean uh, deterministic use cases or yeah. Uh, like like test like, cases, yeah. So like the the right exact exactly this uh, sequence of actions, which lead to exactly the, this result. So while with the sync, it's like it's it's not deterministic, use, but we, yeah. Like we use both. Uh, uh, I think we use static. Uh, like static test cases for almost everything, even in sync. Uh, so what uh, like sync does is uh, you feed one chain, you feed uh, a couple of like predetermined blocks, and then you synchronize the other uh, 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 thing from it. And uh, it's, I think it makes sense to have like uh, the stuff in Hive be deterministic um because otherwise you will get like a lot of like weird stuff yeah i don't know and, and like non-deterministic testing fuzzing everything else that should not live in hive in my opinion. yeah I, I, I completely agree we are not going to uh, like test software um, to prevent race conditions via hive it's not made for this i think Okay. I have a question regarding uh, MeshMock. Uh, does at the moment MeshMock support engine directives? Yes. Okay. So I guess we just need to like pick uh, regarding the hive when it just like probably the engine API is the easiest one to be to start with like create a simulator to test engine API implementation which will be then used by 
to, te to test the this EIP's implementations um, and just try to create a simulator and write tests why hive. This is my naive uh, thoughts uh, towards like the step um, uh, towards the first step of of uh, integration testing on the match. Makes sense. Okay, cool. Then the next question is who is willing to start looking into Yeah, that? I guess, and one maybe way to frame this is like, does somebody have the bandwidth to look at this now and like not distract from basically working on the merge itself, right? Like, so obviously if like Marians or Terrence spend their time on this, they're like not working on the Geth or Prismatic implementation for the merge and that's like not ideal. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm wondering, does anybody like not working on a client have the bandwidth and like the skill sets to add these uh, simulators to Hive? I can take a look. Awesome. Great. Who said that? Can't see Alex. Me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Alex. Okay, sorry. <laughs> this is Great. on my plan of things to do. I just have been doing other things as well and slowly approaching that. Same. But this is important, Matt. This is important. Cool. I can, I can also take a look. Um, I, I would like to try to port the, uh, the test cases that I prepared from, yeah, yep. to, yeah, that, that yeah, I can, I can look into it too. Awesome. Um, okay. Um, like my, yeah, okay, so cool. Hive should be. So a result now, right? <laughs> okay, so my, another question like that I have is, um, we should probably have a um, kind of like a list of test scenarios somewhere at some place. Right. And, yeah. What's and I feel like that- proceed? Okay, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, I feel like maybe we should link something in the readiness checklist where like we can uh, basically, you know, say like this is like the, the kind of master testing document and then kind of track who's working on it. Um, ideally, just so we kind of have it all in one place. Yeah, sure. And yeah, hack and format is not, does not suit well for this kind of purpose, I guess. Right, because nobody can edit, like, or everybody can edit it or something. Yeah. You can have issue would be good. Yeah. Sorry, what? GitHub issues. Just, um, yeah, find some repo. You can track it there. Yeah, but these tests are like tests in different parts of the software. And and the specs are right. located in different repos and so, so forth. So what's we the- We can make like some kind of meta spec thing. Although I, I kind of feel like that was a little confusing personally. Will we use Google Sheets or any kind of this? Yeah, how about uh, Google XML sheet? These are links to implementation of the test cases. Yeah. I feel like I um, I saw this kind of test sheets some long time ago. I mean, you, you're you're like listing the test cases in in this way, right? Yeah. Usually, good. 
Dimitri, do you want to work on testing the APs? Um, if that includes working on Hive, then uh, no, <laughs> I don't have that much availability now. I mean, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, yeah, I'm not uh, speaking about Hive now. I'm speaking about mm -hmm. standalone tests, like regular block tests that you write, uh, that your user will create with the uh, test. Yeah, for the difficulty opcode, we are going to make tests uh, or for the random. The random opcode. It, it looks quite straightforward. Once the get uh, implements the merge, we just make those tests in our usual format. Mm. I thought that uh, perhaps we would need the um, Hive upgrade for all existing tests that we have because uh, consensus changed and the script importing blocks would need to. Uh, to execute this uh, node simulator uh, confirmation that this block is legitimate, something like this. Hello? So um, I I did implement when I implemented four three nine nine I implemented a way to uh, pass uh, the random field into a state test and uh, execute the state test with uh, with uh, post merge rules. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it or if we should rather have a new import command that says okay those like import those tests as if they were uh, uh, with uh, post merge rules um, uh, i thought we can just use a blockchain test format as the block header is not changed we just treat uh, nonce and mix hash field according to EIP and uh, test uh, random opcodes it that way yes I, unless yeah, but really need state test format for that. But you will need to switch uh, the software to the proof of stake consensus engine. Yeah, we need like we need to mm -hmm. we need to uh, detect that. But like I guess that it's it's not a, a big of, of a problem, but uh, we have to think about how to do it. Uh, who are we? Which client? Guess. Ah, uh, guess. Uh -huh. yeah, probably you so can so use like some value for terminal total difficulty that is from Genesis. I don't know. For the get, um, I use transition tool to generate the test. It accepts the fork flag through which I tell on which rules to execute uh, EVM commands. And when running, when running on Hive, that script uses common line. There might something might change. That's what I was talking about. That is because um, get execute all the tests through Hive. What do you mean? Do you mean all tests? Oh yeah, all the existing tests, the blockchain tests that we have, are executed on Hive, on GET, through the execution script, which runs GET common line. And I think there is like Genesis config file, which tells which fork to activate. So I don't know if that's gonna be enough after transition, because of the um, second client, which should supposed to talk to get and authorize the uh, blocks, right? The validator. Um, that's why I think we need to have a simulator that can send pre-merge box and then also send box via the engine API. Yeah. Dimitri, there is an engine API. Uh, as the engine API is the protocol that is used by 
CL to communicate to consider by consist their clients to communicate with execution their clients. And this is going to be the natural um, code mm -hmm. path to drop uh, post merge blocks on execution engines and execution their clients. Yeah, currently scripts on get uh, on Hive do not use it, right? They would need to be upgraded. Yeah. And I looked at the command. I think I can um, implement the same way and retest it. Uh, the same way Hive script is doing to get client. Uh, it's a slow way of executing the test we have because each test will require a client restart and it might take longer, longer time. Uh, I mean, I, I'm talking right now about uh, executing the existing tests that we have after POS merge so that they will work on Hive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, you've been saying that 43, like the, the random of code is straightforward. What do you think about 3675? Like it's more... Um, I mean, it's... it's uh, I know the test for it is easy to implement yeah. because uh, random is just read it from block header so, and oh, the block header format doesn't change. So test format doesn't change. And we just create a test where we put a byte code of uh, random and um, just check that the value is taken from block header. For this, for this, I mean, because in state test format, we would need to change test format again for, uh, for this random field. Yeah. And uh, yeah, unless someone really needs it, I mean, we can do it, but uh, maybe we just uh, do it in blockchain. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's like state tests are valuable here. Would you mind to, start to create this document with test cases? Yeah, for the random opcode, yeah, we are going to create this. Um, I'm thinking if it's a good idea to use the same document for all tests, uh, like probably use different tabs if it's a Google Sheet for for Hive and for other stuff. What do you think? Mm. I mean, like a, a list of implemented test cases, right? Yeah. And yeah, a list of all test cases with the statuses, like it's implemented, it's in progress. And this is not mm -hmm. started. Yeah, I see. So can we use the mainnet checklist for basically like the high level categories? Like for example, say, you know, like 3075 tests, 4399 tests, uh, you know, adding like an engine API simulator to Hive and then just link those to whatever repos or issues make sense so that we can use the readiness checklist as like the, the kind of high level view, which kind of links back out to like, you know, potentially a set of issues or just like a tracker issue or whatnot in, in those different repos because yeah, it, it, it's hard to like create a new place where everybody kind of goes to and we already have one. Um, so I think there's, yeah, there's a lot of value in trying to, um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think just trying to, to move as much stuff as we can there and then have each repo kind of organized on its own. Yeah, I think it's, it's like a good idea and reasonable. So they will be kind of separate, like independent from each other. Yeah, like, exactly. But at least support, in the in yeah. the yeah in the readiness checklist, we can like link to all of them and people, like because clearly it's like a different skill set to like do the hive tests versus just the actual blockchain tests and whatnot. So I think just linking to wherever those live is is probably the way to go. 
yeah cool i think it's a good idea the issue with uh, this might be that i i don't know um like yeah right i don't know yet because i'm not that much familiar with hive which simulators uh, are we lacking to implement this this hive stuff need some help here yeah i think that makes sense i think we can just list like the basically you know the high level ones that we we put out like for the engine api for uh, basically a consensus layer and then kind of yeah or have the people who are doing it in hive just make a pr to the readiness checklist with like better details right for instance i'm not sure that mocking el makes a lot of sense makes a lot of value but some of the things like this one could be verified only if el is mocked with this some um, but i don't know how to do this actually um, so yeah let's not discuss it this is just one of the examples of like uncertainty in my case so how to implement this is this possible and yeah what to do Does anybody have any questions with respect to this document? Um, I have a question about the stay alone part. Uh, so I saw you uh, listed some uh, helpers from the data guy of the consensus fix. So I uh, wonder, uh, so we now we only test this cases uh unit test in PySpec. We didn't uh provide any test vectors of this test. Oh, I mean for the validator guide test. So um would it be useful to create test vectors for the validator guide? Uh, we didn't provide it then because uh this is not really part of the on-chain consensus. So the client team can implement it in their yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, see. Yeah, just I don't one. Think, yeah, the... yeah. yeah, that's a good question. I think we just need them to be tested and we just need to test the spec itself uh, without mm -hmm. exposing any vectors for validator guide. So. I have just parsed all the functions that I have met in the consensus specs merge um, folder. So this is the, right. this is how this section like appeared. So mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, got got it. Thanks. I have a question regarding the integration um, engine API static tests. Um, so do they have to be implemented on top of Hive? But because from what I've heard so far, it seems like Merge Mock is more suitable to run static uh, test vectors for this. Well, I think the idea with Hive is that it's just like this encapsulated piece of software that runs all of the tests that we care about against Ethereum clients. And so it feels like it would like like right now we're kind of manually doing a simulator by running the el client locally and then running merge mock and then it sending requests to the el but i think that could all just live in the hive simulator and then it would like spin up like a docker file for each client and then do all of the different um tests against each one of them okay that, that makes sense okay 
And yeah, I think also Hive yep. is, yeah, the, um, one of the upsides of Hive is like, it can be integrated in CI, right? So it can be run on CI and run all these tests. Um, I don't know if, if client implementations integrated it. I guess yes, but I'm not sure. Yeah, for instance, does does get run Hive on CI? Well, Hive is uh, Hive pulled the new releases from all the clients and then tests them. So I'm not sure if we trigger that by CI or if this is just oh. done by Hive itself. Oh, you mean that it's cons like if it's, there is any, anything new in the repository? It's yeah, it's almost constantly running. Yeah. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, that's great. Also, yeah. So we have this using Hive. Uh, we have this kind of automation for, and we can have this kind of automation for continuously clients as well. Like we will have to have this kind of automation for consensus state clients because, um, yeah, because some of the tests are involved involve consistently as well. Okay, cool. So uh, regarding fuzzing, I. Uh implemented a fuzzer for the engine API a while back that of course became stale with the new specs. Um, once the specs are like pretty stable, I'll, I'll take another stab at it and uh, let it run like uh, um, on, on, on an EF machine or something. So if anyone is interested in, in, in fuzzing or uh, fuzzing on the execution layer client side or, or maybe also fuzzing on the consensus layer client side they can they can talk to me um and then we can we can figure stuff out cool so and it's just yeah the basic usage is just to drop and um, keep dropping messages and see if client responds right if it's not yes. crashed or yeah so um it like we uh, i have like four different modes i think so some some just do random uh, uh tests that should be uh, like really random tests that that sh should never work some do things like create a payload execute the payload uh set the fork choice to this payload um and the fuzzer itself can dis, uh, can like uh, choose between those different uh, strategies, and it already found uh, an issue in Geth with uh, where it like it kept like it basically like it created blocks, and then it kept um, uh, setting the head back. And, and like reorging the chain <clears throat> until Genesis and uh, then then it crashed something. So it, it's like a really, really nice way for the execution layer clients uh, to test their stuff because it does a, a really interesting interactions. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And do we have, do, do we do like EVM fuzzing stuff? Yes, like this. We, okay. we do we do EVM fuzzing. I'm also doing that, um, and uh, Perry and I, I'm not sure. Yeah, he's on the call. Um, we we plan to uh, um, uh, 
like we're doing differential fuzzing, EVM fuzzing, so testing all the different, like creating creating a state test and then executing it on all of the different clients and looking at the traces and see that they execute the same opcodes, that they have the state, same state route in the end and stuff like this. And we plan to um, basically increase this a bit because right now it's only one machine running running those tests and uh, uh, we, we, we would like to like uh, uh, further this a bit. Um, are you running them uh, like to test all the client implementations? Or are you running them in pairs or what? No, no, I'm uh, like all the client implementations. Uh, so it's okay. not all the client implementations. It's uh, uh, get, Aragon, Besu, Nethermind, Open Ethereum. Those are the, the, the clients that are currently run there. Um, if anyone of the clients are listening in and want to be added to it, you need to implement something like EIP 3155, uh, which is a way to uh, trace uh, transactions and then contact me and we'll figure it out how to add your client to this. Yeah, fuzzing is a very important thing. One of the tools. Um, the... Please uh, give me the link also. So have a look at it. Do you sure. mean the document or the uh, Yeah, for the test fuzzing. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I should I should also say that um, bringing consensus to their clients to Hive means that part of resources of consensus their client implement implementers uh, of the teams, part of resources of the teams that implement the test their client will need to be um, not, not, of course, not full-time dedicated, but dedicated to, to look at Hive and if something, <laughs> yeah. some, some failures, so it will need some attention to, to be fixed. I think, I, maybe this is naive. Ideally, it's like if we can get people that are not on the core team to like do the implementation and then just reach out to those teams if there's like a problem with the client itself or whatnot, it's kind of like an 80-20 thing where most of the work is not done by the client devs, but then obviously if there's an issue with like adding Lighthouse or adding Prism, like that might be quite team specific. Um, and and uh, and like we're gonna need their help, but ideally it's not like the core thing they work on. Um, and and we can have people that are not on those teams trying to help set that up. I'm not sure how realistic this is, but we can give it a try. I'm planning to focus on working on testing related things for the next couple of months. Um, I'm nice. just trying to finish up some unrelated things to Hive right now. So if people want to immediately jump in, we could set up like a weekly sync or something and just talk about it. Yeah. I don't know if anybody was interested in jumping in now. I, I would be really interested. Like I'm, I'm still focusing on the implementation uh, for most of my time, but uh, um, I think that will will also shift in the uh, next couple of weeks okay. uh, when the implementation is like getting stable, and so I I'm, I'm also shifting to testing them. Cool. Also, do people in general agree with the high level outline of the test plan? Anything missed here? Um, I, I think we, we have to test some, some more edge cases, things like uh, what I did with the DevNet, like mining during the transition and, and stuff like this. Yeah, this is I agree. Not, not, not like it's neither integration tests nor, nor like static test cases. So it's more like- yeah, it's I think more, it's defined it as system tests, yeah. 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 
Yeah. It's almost like QA in a way, right? Like we need people like to stand up these networks, make sure that they work and try to break them. Yeah. yeah. And and like also like document all of the findings. Yep. So for example, yeah. I don't know, I, I like I sometimes I don't get peers and because of that or uh, like it uh, I I I um I uh, I observed that it matters in which way I shut down the consensus layer and execution layer client. If I shut down the execution layer client first, then the consensus layer client will go into some kind of panic mode and like try to like send uh, payloads and like not not receive them. And then once I like restart the execution layer client, the consensus layer client still um, doesn't. 100% work or, or, or stuff like this. So um, that was something that I, I saw with the lighthouse. But um, yeah, I think it's important for everyone that runs this this kind of software that runs on the testnet to just uh, like document every uh, weird issue that's that's happening and, and send it to the teams. Um, I, I like I I got like three or four reports already, and I was a bit like slow in in taking care of that, but. Th they should be taken care of. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, comment from Perry in chat. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, it just should be done somewhere. I think, yeah, just again, for like, I don't know, clarity, if people want to like write this stuff down in like random places, like wherever is most convenient for you, but then just open a PR against the merge readiness checklist to like add a link there um, that can ensure that like, you know, we have one place where we're keeping track of it, but it's, I think it's, it's unrealistic to get people to write all these th things down in the same place, but hopefully we can just aggregate the links. I'm collecting links. Yeah. Oh, you already have the link, I think. So if these categories, the high level categories are good, so we can use, we can start with them for to update the merge readiness checklist. I think it could be done this week. Cool. And, and even though if we don't have this like um, issue under or any other track and document under each of the categories, I think it's also fine. It can be added like later once created. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't need everything now. And I guess, yeah, just, we only have like three minutes left, but one thing worth noting is it feels like if we get all of this done, it's like we've done like the, basically the base cases. Um, and then I think it, it's maybe a reasonable strategy to like start with this and like, depending on how well this goes, then see stuff like, you know, we talked about like stress testing networks with like uh, larger blocks or stuff like that. It feels like all those things can kind of come after, but that just ensuring we have like a really solid foundation in the next couple of months is like, if we only get that, that's already a really good, valuable thing. Um, hey guys.
by the way, I wanted to add one thing. Um, Perry mentioned it in the chat. So, by the way, hi, I'm Raphael. Um, I'm working on uh, getting like some uh, bigger networks running, like with all the client combinations. Um, and this thing can either run like a private test net, like in a local area network, or even like exposing the nodes uh, to the public internet. And then you could like connect to all of them. Uh, and the way I'm doing this currently is using like Kubernetes. Uh, so with that, we should be able like to then uh, create kind of big test nets uh, like on the go. It spawns up like quickly fast. Um, so we can have like a full fledged new network like in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Awesome. Just wanted to say that. Cool. Well, thanks everyone. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's keep uh, this conversation going on the Discord. Um, and yeah, I feel like we have a, a lot of next steps here. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everybody. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.